This Airfax segment is on something that instrument pilots had better take very seriously, night IFR. On the one hand, we can get an instrument rating without any training at night. And the only recent experience requirement at night is for those three VFR takeoffs and landings to a full stop. On the other hand, night IFR is one of the most difficult things that we do with our airplanes. And this level of difficulty leads to a dramatic increase in risk for most pilots. Putting exact numbers on safety records is hard to do because the numbers on hours flown are approximate at best, but there is a general consensus that the night IFR record in personal and business flying is about three times worse than the IFR record in the daytime. Let's get one thing out of the way first. Engine failure related accidents are but a tiny part of the night IFR accident picture. Systems failures, vacuum and electric, account for slightly more problems, but when all mechanical problems are considered, they are a factor in only about 10% of the serious IFR accidents that occur at night. So it appears wise to concentrate on the other 90%. We have a separate Airfax DVD on night IFR. Here, what I really want to do is convince you of the necessity of doing a few things. First, recognize that night and day IFR are different animals. Doing it in the dark is just well different. Just think of how much you see with peripheral vision in the daytime and relate that to darkness. Even in the best lit of cockpits, there are still dark corners. And where you may be able to read charts easily in the daytime without glasses or with your old glasses, the numbers might appear fuzzy in the limited light available at night. Second, once you're satisfied that the visual requirements are met, Go flying at night, IFR, with an instructor. Even if it's done while you're flying under a hood, it's good to experience the actual deed before trying it on your own. Certainly you would want to do this before you fly the first actual night IFR flight, which, for the most of us, comes at the end of a trip after the time changes back to standard time. Certainly you wouldn't want to make that first actual night IFR approach without some training on doing what is a difficult task. Third, remember that any error is much more serious at night than it is in the daytime. Misreading the altimeter, misreading a number on the chart, or misinterpreting a glide slope indication can be far more serious at night than in the daytime. Why? Because in the daytime, if there's any ceiling, you will break out and have an accurate visual indication of your height above the ground. That just doesn't work at night. Man-made obstacles are illuminated, but natural ones are not. Fourth, recognize that the only thing that will keep the airplane from arriving somewhere other than the airport is an awareness of position and altitude. And be well aware that the only lights that you see that really count are those related to the airport. The runway lights, approach lights, visual approach slope indicator lights, runway end identifier lights, whatever's there. Certainly a critical time in a night approach is the time after you think you become visual and start to descend toward the runway. The word is to never ever leave a published minimum altitude based on a sighting of anything other than lights associated with the runway. There are lighted runways out there without visual or electronic glide slope guidance. On those you have to develop your own approach slope. One way to do this is with knowledge that the point on the ground toward which the airplane is tracking will remain stationary in the windshield. Couple this with a minimum acceptable rate of descent, such as 500 or 600 feet a minute at the speeds used in most singles, and the approach slope to the runway should be acceptable. If the runway is served by a GPS approach with a waypoint at the end of the runway, you can use distance to the end of the runway as a guideline. 400 feet per mile is an acceptable approach slope, so if you want to come over the end of the runway at 50 feet, you should be 450 feet above the ground when a mile out or 850 feet when two miles out. Fifth, and finally, recognize that the published visibility minimums for non-precision approaches are often fiction, day or night, but especially at night. The published minimum descent height may be 600 or 700 feet above the ground, and the published minimum flight visibility may be one mile. If you see the runway one mile ahead and you're flying at 700 feet and 90 knots, that would mean you have to descend 700 feet in 40 seconds. Rates of descent like that are unhealthy at night, so it is much better to decide in advance that if the runway is not in sight when a normal descent can be made, it's a missed approach. Likewise, on a circling approach, it's best not to leave the minimum descent altitude or height 
until you turn on to final approach. If that won't allow a normal rate of descent, bag it. Hey, night IFR is rewarding and the risks can be managed. You just have to understand those risks and the limitations that need to apply if the risks are to be managed. Have a good evening.